Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Happy Saturday as usual. As you know, I am Coach Ray. If you don't know, I am Coach Ray. Hope everybody's having a good start today weekend. So for today, we are actually in my home. We're going to be doing a sick mobility class from home today. Now, for today's class, we are going to need access to one long, one short stick and a steel mace. We're going to be using mace bells. And we're going to be going with some basic uh, movements today. So for the mace bell, we're going to do a 10 to 2 swing. And I'm going to try to work through uh, a progression of ways to kind of get there. And then from there, we're going to do a step lunge with rotation. Uh, more specifically, more like a wood chop. So we are going to be working with movements are going to be a little bit dynamic. So make sure you do have a little bit of space. It's a, so you have the option to move around if need be. However, for the warm up, we are going to go through the full body. We're going to put a lot of emphasis on the shoulders and spine since we are going to be working with shoulder rotational or specific drills as well as spinal drills to loosen everything up. Let's go ahead and get into it. We are going to start with the short stick first. We're going to start off with kayaking, then we're going to get into some dislocates. So from here, I'm going to grip the short stick and I'm actually have my fingertips at the end here. Now, from here, I'm going to start with my right hand up. I'm going to take a horse stance, a wide stance, and I'm going to drive that right hand through, up and over, then left hand. Keep the movement nice and slow. All right, I should be feeling those shoulder blades gliding along the rib cage here. You don't want excessive movement in the spine, you just want to keep it all in the shoulders. Good, nice and slow, keep it controlled. Now let's go backwards. So reverse direction. You wanna to try to get as much range as you can. Good, nice and easy. Let's go back forward. Now we're gonna add in rotations. Left hand up and over, rotate to the right. Right hand up and over, rotate to the left. You want to try to get all that movement and rotation in the spine here. Breathe. Let's go reverse directions. Good. Trying to get as much movement in those shoulders and spine as you can here. Excellent, and ease off. So now we're gonna get into dislocates. We're just gonna use this as a way to kind of warm up the shoulders, but making sure we're keeping control of the rib cage and the pelvis here. I'm gonna turn to the side, so grip is gonna depend on you and your mobility. If you want, you wanna make sure that you are wider than shoulder width, if you're pretty mobile, you can go with the more narrow grip. But for me, I'm gonna go out pretty wide here. Arms are going to be straight, and I'm going to have a hip width stance, toes are pointed forward, squeeze the glutes, overhand grip here. Now from this position, I'm going to lightly pull the stick apart about 20% just to get some activation in the upper back, and I'm going to keep my glutes tight, rib cage down, as I bring the stick up overhead. Bring it up as far as you can manage. Bring the stick back down. Once it gets to eye level, compress the stick at 20% as well. All the way down. Pull apart. Come up. Good. Bring it back down. Compress the stick. Excellent. Pull apart. Up. Keep those arms straight. down and compress excellent let's go one more time pull apart up hold down and compress and ease off now we're going to work with external rotation so we're still going to keep this short stick here and what I'm going to do 
I'm gonna have the stick on my left hand, I'm gonna have it on the right side of my body, I'm gonna bring my right, the stick on the outside of my right uh, shoulder, and I'm gonna grip up at the top here, right? Or to grip like so. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on actively externally rotating. And so from this position here, my left hand is at the bottom of the stick. I have a roughly shoulder width, hip width stance, toes are forward. And what I'm gonna do from here is I'm going to actively internally rotate. So I'm going to bring my hand towards my uh, center line. And then I'm going to rotate the stick. So I'm kind of working on internal rotation here. Then I'm gonna bring it back to neutral. Good. Rotate out. Hold that in range for a couple seconds. Back in. And we're only going at about 30%. Rotate out. Good. Back in. Make sure you're gripping that into the stick. Breathe. Good. Back in one more time. Excellent. Good. And back in. And relax. Release your hand. Switch sides. So now sticks on the outside. Make sure you have that grip there. Stance is still the same. Elbow in front. So actively internally rotate. Try to get that hand towards your center line. Rotate out. Good. Back in. You're giving tension both ways. Rotate. Back in. Excellent. Rotate. Breathe. Back in. Let's go two more. Rotate. Back in. Let's go one more time. Good. And back in. Excellent. Ease off. We're going to switch back over to the other side. And now from here, we're going to hold that position. We're going to pull into that stretch position here. And now we're going to pull the stick apart. So try to lengthen that stick at about 20% tension. Now I'm going to rotate my hand away from my center line. So I'm going to try to get more external rotation as I'm still pulling the stick apart. Working on those external rotators of the shoulder. Only about 20%. Excellent. We're going to ease off. And we're going to switch sides here. So left hand on the outside, or the inside, sorry. Going to get that stretch. Good. Pull the stick apart and try to externally rotate. Hold. Breathe. Three. Two, one, excellent, and ease off. Wonderful. Now we're going to take the long stick. So I'm going to place the short stick down. We're going to get into the single arm hang here. Now this is just to kind of stretch out some of those tissues. So I'm going to have my right leg forward. Left leg is going to be back. I have the bottom of the stick in line with my right heel or heel of my front foot. Have my hand up high. I'm going to sink down into a hang. You can have your other hand on for support, but we're trying to get the shoulder, the lateral line to stretch out here. And we're just going to hang in this position. We're not moving. We're not rotating here. Good. We're going to ease off, come up, switch sides. So left foot is forward, right foot is back. Take a nice big split. Right hand is up and you're going to sink down into it. Breathe. Excellent. Should be feeling a nice, good stretch. Get a little bit of traction there. Good. And come up. Excellent. Wonderful. Now, we're going to work with the spine. So I'm going to take the stick, place it behind my mid-back. Now for this, it's going to look, it's actually going to be very, very similar to the slap shot. Only thing is we're actually not, we're not shifting our hips side to side for this. We're actually just going to work on 
rotating the stick, uh, one end of the stick towards the ground. So I'm going to take a wide stance still. Again, it's going to be whatever is most comfortable for you. Toes are pointed forward, and I have the stick across my mid back, and I'm going to hinge here. That's the first part. Get a nice, good stretch in those hamstrings. Now, from this position here, I'm going to rotate the left end down to my center line, place it on the floor, and I'm going to pull the stick apart. Should be feeling that upper back activation. Ease off. Rotate the right end of the stick down. Place it. Pull apart. Only about 20%. Get that upper back activation here. Ease off. Rotate that left end down further. Pull apart. Getting more rotation here. Ease off. Rotate the right end down. Pull apart. Breathe. Ease off, rotate the left end down, try to get further, pull apart. Ease off, rotate the right end down, pull apart. Excellent. Let's rotate that left end down one more time. Pull apart. Ease off. Rotate that right end down, pull apart. Excellent, ease off, back to neutral, stand up, go ahead and wiggle those feet in. Wonderful. Now we're gonna work on the hips, so we're gonna get into pelvic tilt. And so from here, I'm gonna take a wide stance, wider than shoulder width, Toes are pointed forward. Now position-wise, always keep your spine stacked over your hips. I'm going to have the bottom of the stick angled in towards me. Both hands are going to be stacked roughly about chest height here. I'm going to get into that horse stance. I'm going to drive the stick down about 30% tension. I'm going to do a posterior tilt, so I'm going to tuck my pelvis in, squeeze my glutes, drive my knees apart. Right? So I'm getting hip extension and external rotation. And now I'm going to tuck my pelvis the opposite way, going into an anterior tilt. So driving the stick down. Posterior tilt. Good. Feel those glutes get nice and tight. Anterior tilt. Posterior tilt. Good. Anterior tilt. Posterior tilt. One more time. Anterior tilt. Excellent. Ease off. Wonderful. We're going to go into lateral tilts here. This is the last one. Then we're going to go over some drills with the steel mace. So from here, same position. Drive the stick down about 30%, 20 to 30. We're going to bump the right hip up. Good. Then bump the left hip up. As you bump that hip up, it should be feeling that glute fire. Bump the right hip up, right glute fires. Bump the left hip up, left glute fires. Keep driving that stick down, right hip, left hip. Right hip, left hip. One more time each way, right and left. Back to center and ease off. Wonderful. All right, folks. We're gonna get into the working drills with the steel mace. Now, the first thing I do wanna work on, so we are gonna do a 10 to two position. Also, also, if you do not have access to a steel mace, you can actually still do this with a kettlebell, right? So these can already be very reminiscent of halos, right? It, the drill is going to be very much exactly, pretty much the same. It's just a little bit of a different tool to get a little bit of a different activation. Now, with the steel mace, we want to work on rhythm, right? And also getting used to the weight pendulum, uh, penduluming back and forth here. So the first drill that we're going to do, we want to hinge to pick up the steel mace. And I'm going to turn around for this. Now I'm going to have a position where my hands are over my head. 
Now, from this position, when I say pendulum, I want the mace to swing back and forth. All right? Now, as I do that, I'm going to have a little bit of movement in shifting my body, and that's okay. But what I want to do is I want to let the weight of the mace bell shift back and forth. So from here, I'm going to rotate a bit, get some movement, and that movement's mostly coming from the upper body, not so much the hips, but just the spine. And we're just getting used to moving the mace bell back and forth. Just want to breathe, keep those elbows up nice and high. Keep swinging, keep swinging. Shoulders are probably going to start burning a little bit. That's okay. Three, two, one, and good. Knees off. Take a second. Now, the next part is pulling those elbows down. So we're, you should be kind of getting used to that swinging motion. Now we're going to get those lats involved as we actually get that the kettle uh, or the mace bell out to that 10 or 2 position or in this case that would actually be more like 4 and 8 you're going to pull your elbows down and in right again it's going to activate those lats however that's going to pull the mace bell right into the position we want to be at so we're going to take about roughly you can go with the wide stance you don't want to go narrow you want to go wide have a good wide base I'm going to actually switch hands and I'm going to have mace bell on my left hand here. And what we're going to do, I'm going to slide that left hand down. So for me, this is my 10 o'clock position. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow the weight to fall over. I'm going to come over the shoulder and it's going to end up being here. Again, and I'm pulling my elbows down towards in, or into my rib cage. And I'm going to go the opposite way. So it's going to fall over to the other side, same thing. Again, pulling those elbows down. So let's actually put that into motion. So from here, up, over, pull. It's one, this one, one per side, good. Good, again, it's two, it's three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. He's off. Take a second. Now, again, it's pretty dynamic. It's a little tricky, but... If it's falling out correctly, which it should be going out to the side, it's not going back necessarily. It's kind of coming out to the side, coming up and back over. If your rhythm is good, you shouldn't hit yourself in the butt or your back of your legs. You want to keep it smooth. Let's go ahead and switch sides. I'm switching my hands. So now I'm going to start with my right hand up on top. Let's go 10 breaths per side again. So I'm over. That's one. Two, three, four, five, six, breathe, seven, eight, nine. 10. Excellent. He's off. We're going to do one more set each way. Now you do want to make sure that you're switching hands as we go along here, just so you're going to even work on both sides. Now again, we're getting a lot of rotational force production on the shoulders. We're getting core. We're also getting the lats. Again, you still have to actively pull in as you actually do that. Let's go ahead and get it to the other side. Now we're going to go left hand stacked over the top. So from here, start again. One, 
Good. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Excellent. He's off. So something else I want you to notice is if you see where my hands are going, I'm not going out to the side, my hands are coming up, right? So as my hands are coming up towards my face, the, the mace bell is actually swinging around in a circular motion. You don't want your hands to go out. Kind of want to keep them along your center line, overhead, and back over, right? Let's go with the last one. And now we're going to switch hands again. Right hands on top. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Excellent. Good. Ease off. Take a second. Now, so we're going to use a mace bell, but again, if you're not from a mace bell, you can actually use a stick for this. So we're going to be doing a step lunge chop. Let me show you. I'm actually going to show you with the stick here because this is going to be kind of our warm up. Again, it's going to be somewhat, it's actually going to be dynamic. It's not going to be static here because we are stepping back. Now, I'm going to have both feet together. All right. Now, whatever side I'm going to step to, or sorry, whatever, whatever leg is going to be forward, that hand I want facing in towards my body. The opposite hand is going to be facing, uh, sorry, facing towards my body as well. But what this is doing here is when I go back into that position, I'm in a position where I can actually create tension and compress and uh, pull apart. So with the mace bell, we're not gonna be actually pulling apart or compressing it. However, it's about maintaining balance because we need to, do need to have a little bit of a push-pull dynamic between both arms. So from here, I'm going to grip it the same way or same width I would for the mace bell. And I'm going to have, start with my left foot going to be four, so my right foot is going to be stepping back here. Now, to start off, start in this position here, arms are both straight out. And I want to compress the stick at about roughly 40%. Now, I'm going to bring my right foot up, step back, lunge down, and I'm going to chop. All right, so this is rotation of the spine. And as I come up, I'm gonna bring my left arm up overhead and I wanna pull apart here. Good. And then I'm gonna compress, step back with the right. Good. Up, pull apart. Good. Step back, compress. Up, pull apart. And ease off. Excellent. We're going to switch sides. So now my right hand is going to be in towards my body. Left hand is going to be facing up or away. So the same thing with the opposite hands. Hands are here. Compress the stick. Pick that left foot up. Step back. Chop down. Good. Step in. And pull apart. Good. Compress. Step back. Up, pull apart, step back, compress, up, pull apart, ease off. Excellent. 
Now, again, if you don't have a mace bell, go with the stick. Still use it, right? Now, for the mace bell, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna, we're gonna switch back. So my left foot's gonna be stepping back. My left hand's on the end of the mace bell here. Other hand's at the neck of the mace bell. Now, the weight is in this right hand, all right? So right foot stepping back, weight's in my right hand. And again, we're still going with that chop. So feet are together. Make sure that left foot is nice and active. All right. Start with the hands are out. I'm going to step back with the right. Good. Step forward with the right. Get that rotation. Step back. Up. Back. And up. And ease off. We're going to switch. Good. Hands are out. Step back with the left. Up. Good. Step back. Up. Step back. And up. And ease off. Take a second. Objective here is, I want you to keep both arms straight. That lengthens that lever. If you can't, have both arms bent at a 90 degree angle or bent at a position that you can actually still control the weight, your balance, and make sure you're getting proper rotation and movement. This is a movement and a rotation of, again, the upper body. We're not trying to get the lower body to rotate. We're getting a lot of uh, oblique and core engagement here. So let's go again. And you pick up. Weights of my right hand, or right hand with the neck here. So again, we're stepping back with that right foot. Hands are out. Up. So back. Good. Up. Back. Up. Chop. Up. Let's go two more. So back. Up. One more time, back and up. Ease off, now we're gonna switch sides. Here, step back, up, back, up, back, three, up, back, up, one more time, back, and up, excellent, and ease off, wonderful, good, now, requires a bit of balance, also a little bit more exhausting than it looks, but if you're working on that rotation, first of all, it gets you really, really good at learning how to connect the obliques and connecting those fascia lines, however, it's really strong, really dynamic. You want to be able to move around while still activating. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to work on a little bit more rotational strength. We're going to be doing a plank, a standing plank with rotation. All right, we've done this before. It's been a little while. So I'm going to take a step back. Feet are about roughly shoulder width. Toes are pointed forward. I'm going to use a short stick here. You can use a long stick if you want. I'm just going to go with the short stick. And I'm going to have the bottom of the stick angled in towards me. So if I turn to the side, bottom of the stick is here, right? So we want to be creating force going down that natural arm line. Now, as we do this, we're looking to keep the hips facing forward. So my tip is, if you're rotating to your left, you need to drive your left hip forward, right? To keep it from opening up and rotating. Otherwise, we'll lose that connection to the obliques. Let's go ahead and get started here. So it's going to be a long duration hold. So we're going to have both hands about roughly chest height. And I'm going to drive the stick down at 40%. Squeeze the glutes, keep the core nice and active, ribs down. And from this position, my right hand's over my left. I'm going to rotate to my left. So I'm going to rotate my shoulders and the stick to my left. Driving my left hip forward, trying to keep both arms straight, 
and then I'm gonna come back forward, so driving that stick down the entire time. Once I get back to the center, hold, and then rotate out to the left again. <sighs> Try to get those shoulders to rotate as much as you can. I almost want my right shoulder to be at 12 o'clock. Come back forward, <sighs> good. Rotate to the left again. <sighs> Drive that left hip forward. <sighs> You'll feel a nice connection to the oblique. <sighs> back forward and ease off take a second switch your hand so left hand is now stacked over the right stick still in the same position arms straight shoulders down drive the stick down squeeze those glutes rotate to the right drive that right hip forward good you're at 40 percent here drive that stick down hard come back forward here rotate to the right Back forward, excellent, one more time. Rotate to the right, keep driving that stick down, do not lose that tension. Back forward, and ease off. Excellent, good, we're gonna go one more set. So, as you're rotating, especially into that end range, you're gonna feel that posterior oblique, you're gonna feel that anterior oblique, you're gonna feel the lats engage a little bit too. That's okay, that's what we're going for. Last. One, right hand stacked over to the left, arms straight, shoulders down, drive the stick into the floor, squeeze those glutes, rotate to the left, back forward, drive that stick down, rotate, back forward, one more time, rotate, and back forward, ease off. Excellent, switch your hands, arms straight, drive the stick down, rotate to the right. Good, back forward, rotate. Make sure you're driving that right hip forward. It's two, one more time, rotate. Back forward and ease off. Excellent, good. Now, we're gonna place the short stick down. We're gonna go with the long stick. So if you have a pad or something for you to kneel on in a bench or chair, or in this case, I'm actually gonna use a couch because we're gonna get into the couch stretch. Now from here, I'm going to place my right foot on the couch and I'm gonna drop that knee down. Now the six in my right hand and I'm gonna have the bottom of the stick about roughly in line with the arch or heel of my front foot. Because this right hand, I wanna keep it up nice and high. Now, as we're in this position, remember, if you need to ease off of it, shift your hips forward, all right? If you want a little more of an intense stretch, shift your hips back. That'll access those deeper anterior, anterior tissues here. Now, from this position, stick's positioned here, Hand is up nice and high, right? I'm gonna drive my back foot into the couch lightly and I'm gonna tuck my pelvis posteriorly. You're gonna feel all those hip tissues and quads actually really open up here. Get a nice good stretch. Good. Breathe. Excellent, ease off, assist yourself up and switch sides. Same setup here, left hand is up, drive that back foot down, tuck your pelvis, posterior tilt. Switch again. Now you're not generating a ton of tension driving that foot down, it's just a little bit, right? So a little bit of activation really set in the stretch here. Okay. Drive that back foot down, tuck your pelvis posteriorly, hold. Breathe. 
This stretch, by the way, should feel more like a 7 out of 10. Not a 10 out of 10. Excellent. Ease off. Assist yourself up. Switch back over to the other side for this last one here. Left hand up. Right hand on. Drive that back foot down. Tuck your pelvis posteriorly. Breathe. Excellent. Slowly ease off and stand up. Good. I'm going to place the long stick down. I'm going to grab a short stick here. I'm going to move the pad over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on shoulder mobility or, or actually it's kind of more so loosening up the shoulder. So I'm going to go to a tall kneeling position and I'm going to have the short stick. We're going to start with the stick in the right hand. I'm going to have the stick in front of my right hip here. My right hand's at the top, All right? You can go with the longer stick if you need to, just to kind of achieve that hand position. But my hand's above my head here. Now what I want to do, still going with the rope grip, I'm going to have my right arm straight and I'm going to lightly drive my right shoulder down towards my right hip or back pocket, I should say. And then I'm going to hinge back into a stretch, getting a hang in the shoulders. And now with this left hand, I'm going to rotate it through. So I'm getting rotation in the spine, but I'm also getting a little bit of a stretch in the shoulders. Bring it back forward. Rotate again, reach out to three o'clock with that left hand. Back in. One more time. Reach the three. Back in and come up. Let's switch sides. So now sticks in the left hand in front of the left hip. Same thing. Drive that left shoulder down toward that back hip. Gonna get a little bit of a hinge and hang. Good. Rotate that right hand, reach out to nine. Back in. Good, reach to nine o'clock. Back in. One more time. Reach to nine. Excellent, back in. And ease off. Wonderful. We're going to take the stick. We're going to have a double overhand grip. Grip out wide. It's going to be very similar to the dislocates that we did earlier, except now we're going to be moving the stick or moving our shoulders in a position where we actually get a little bit of a stretch on those lateral lines. So we're still, still sticking with that tall kneeling position. My ankles are Extended, so plantar flex, just to make sure I have some stability of driving my feet into the floor here. Now from this position, I'm gonna grip out nice and wide, right? If you go narrow, you're not gonna get as much range or as much movement, so you do wanna grip out a little wider for this particular drill. Now from here, I'm gonna drive my feet into the floor lightly, about 10 to 20%, just to have a little bit of activation. Arms are straight, and I'm gonna lightly pull the stick apart about 20%, Bring the stick up to an overhead position. All right, keeping both arms straight. I'm gonna pull with my left hand, get my right bicep to my right ear, and then I'm gonna pull with the right hand, get my left bicep to my left ear. I'm just gonna teeter-totter back and forth. Good. Good, again. You wanna have tension of pulling the stick apart the entire time, lightly though, very light. Good. Let's go one more time to the other side. Back to 
center, down, and ease off. Take a second. Now we're gonna go full dislocates. So instead of last time we stopped in the overhead position, we're actually gonna go all the way up and over if you can manage it, right? So grip out as wide as you can. You can always move your hands in a little closer, again, especially if you're really, really mobile. So I'm gonna go with a wide grip, even wider than the last thing. From here, squeeze your glutes. So glutes are tight, dropping your back feet into the floor, keep all that activation going here. Arms are straight, I'm gonna pull the stick apart about 10%. I'm gonna bring the stick up overhead, and then back. Good, if you can, touch your glutes, and then bring it back up and over. Pull it apart the entire time. Again, that tension is only at about 10%, so really light. Up and over. Good. Excellent. If you can, wiggle your hands in a little bit. All right, pull apart, 10%. Keep those glutes nice and tight. Good, up and over. Excellent, one more time. Breathe. And ease off. Wonderful. Now, we're gonna go to the standing position. We're gonna get into bow and arrow. All right, so we were doing some drills that kind of involve those lateral lines and those tissues. So we're gonna stretch those out. Now we're gonna do two different versions. We're gonna do our standard version of bow and arrows, and then we're gonna flip our top hand to where our thumb is facing up towards the ceiling. That's gonna get more into that low back and QL area. All right, it's gonna feel pretty good. So I'm gonna go with a hip width stance. Toes are gonna to be pointed forward here. Bottom of the stick's gonna be angled in towards me. All right. If you need to, you can always angle it out so you don't have to create as much tension. The objective here is to stretch, not just to bend the stick. So from here, left hand is at about waist height. Right hand comes up over the top, thumb facing down towards the floor. Drive your hips away from the stick first, then extend those hands out. Excellent. Lightly pull upwards with that top hand, only about 10%. Excellent, ease off, nice and slow. Rotate the stick. You can adjust the bottom of the stick if you'd like. Now we're gonna go with that thumbs up grip here. Okay, here's your cross, same thing. Drive those hips away. Now extend both hands out. Lightly pull up with that top hand. Excellent, ease off, nice and slow. Switch sides. So now it's on the right side of my body, right hand is about roughly waist height, left hand comes up over the top, thumb facing down, drive those hips away, extend those hands out. Pull up with that top hand. Excellent, ease off, nice and easy. Rotate that stick a bit. Now with the thumbs up grip, grip the stick. Drive those hips away, extend both hands out. Pull up with that top hand lightly. Three, two, one, ease off. Nice and slow and excellent. That, my friends, concludes today's sick mobility class. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. Hope everybody had a good class today, and I will be sure to catch you all next weekend. As usual, stay safe. Have a good one.